I got a couple of questions for you. Uh, the the first question would be, why are we why are we doing this? What's the impetus behind this, in your opinion? I think the uh, impetus is that uh, you and I know that active law enforcement were left out of uh, of the bill when we considered we considered that amendment uh, some time back after the passage of the Safe Act back in January, and uh, I don't think that was intended in the original bill, nor was it intended that uh, retired police officers be left out and have the ability to carry large capacity magazines. And we're trying to uh, correct that inequity by this pr particular I, proposal. Thank you. I understand that, but why, uh, and I think that goes to what I've said over and over again, that this bill was rushed and completely unready uh, to be rolled out when it was because the flaws are uh, inherent on a daily basis with this law, uh, which I call the unsafe act. But why then? That's a, that's a good answer as to what we're trying to fix. My question then would be, why are we exempting the retired police officers? And I, listen, I have great respect for our police officers and our retired police officers. This is really not, uh, in my opinion, uh, I, I think that they should be able to carry what they need, as should a law-abiding citizen. But my question is, why exempt the retired police? Wh why do they need to carry more rounds than the average citizen? I'm very glad you asked that question because I didn't know whether the uh, SAFE Act at the time when it was pointed out to me was deficient in that active or retired police officers weren't allowed to have these magazines. So I conducted my own personal inquiry uh, of the police commissioner of the city of New York to find out if it would be appropriate to consider an amendment like this uh, for retired police officers. We knew we should do it for active police officers, but I wanted to make sure that police commissioners and chiefs throughout the state were also behind an amendment like this. And the answer I got almost uh, unanimously from talking to these officials was, was that it would be very beneficial because we'd have a cadre of uh, trained police personnel, be they retired, who would be able, if need be, if they got into a firefight, to be able to handle a situation. More important than anybody else, uh, we want to protect our citizens from gunplay that may go on by criminals on the street, and we never know when a retired police officer will happen upon a scene and he will be the only one there who could take charge and control the situation. And I feel confident that since he has the training, the training to handle the situation, whether to use his gun or not use his gun, is very important. And that's why we're doing this. Understood. And I actually don't disagree with you on that. I think that it's, a, uh, it's wonderful if we had a retired police officer on the scene with as many rounds as he or she needs to protect innocent lives. I think it's readily apparent that the law-abiding citizen should be afforded the exact same protection. And the reason I say that is because we cannot always count on a retired law enforcement or an active duty law enforcement officer to be on the scene. So uh, there's an equal protection part of this, I think, that uh, needs to be spoken about, that if I am on the street as a law-abiding citizen who has got a pistol permit, who has a concealed carry permit, why am I limited in my ability to defend not only myself but other innocent lives that may be at risk at that very moment. Well, I think, I think I've answered that already, but let me say it a different way. Um, I would be, and I believe the citizens of the state of New York would be most comfortable with having uh, a duly and sufficiently armed police officer who has hours, months, years of training in using the weapon in a situation that calls for a judgment to be made as to how he should or should he not use the gun or should he take it out, when he should take it out, or whether he should take it out at all. 
and I dare say that I don't think the average citizen has that kind of training to, be know, to know when exactly how to use a weapon as someone who is trained sufficiently as a police officer does. Well, I think it's pretty readily apparent when your life is in danger that you would pull that weapon. I think that, uh, maybe you disagree, but I think that given the opportunity, I would want to rely on myself. If I'm having a concealed carry, or let's say I'm walking through the mall down here in Albany, and something bad were to happen, that's probably another gun-free zone where most of these mass shootings occur anyway, but uh, if, if, if it was really getting bad, again, as I said, you cannot count on a police officer being there, active duty or retired. They're terrific people, and this isn't really about them. This is about the, the New York citizen that has the right to defend themselves and their family just as much. And let me just make a point about that. Mr. Mr. Bachman, you asked him to yield to ask him questions. You certainly can speak on the bill. I just said you might not agree with me. Uh, it isn't whether we agree or disagree. We're asking him to I, I ask did a ask question. Him. Are you asking him to agree or disagree? Yeah, that was the question. Then let him answer. <laughs> well, I was continuing to make a point. The point is... The point is related to, to the point. question. We want you to ask the question. The and let point is related to the question. I wasn't yet done with my question. Then go ahead. Thank you. Please continue your question. Mr. Thank Mr. you. Hoffman. The point is this. A retired police officer under this bill, at home, anywhere in this state, he now or she now has the ability to have unlimited magazine capacity, right? A hundred rounds, if they, if they, well, they're not even, were they, I don't even know. Could they carry, there's a question, could they have a hundred round magazine? No, them? not unless that's what they qualified on. Okay, that, okay so let's say they, qual they had an AR-15 uh, when they were uh, on the force, so they had something similar that had a 30 round magazine. Under this bill, they get to continue to keep that's that. Correct. Okay, correct. So you agree with that? Uh, they would be able to have, let's say, their 9 millimeter, or their Glock, 15, 16 rounds, whatever it carries. They're able to do that, right? Yes. Correct. But yet their next door neighbor, who was not a retired police officer, he's only allowed seven. Correct? Yes, that's correct. And that sounds fair to you. A well, person that only, got there, that sounds fair to you. No, it's not only the... Uh, ordinary person on the street, as you call him. It's also the police officer who, who retired without having uh, trained on that particular weapon. So that if you, like Mr. Graff, uh, retired with a six-shooter, right? he's not qualified to carry a Glock with more than seven rounds. I mean, it's a, let's see what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the individual who has a permit right to carry a gun. He can carry a gun as long as he has seven rounds in it to comply with the state of New York. We're talking about only active and uh, retired police officers who are qualified to have more rounds because they have the training. What, what they training? They have the training. That's the important thing that you have to remember in this bill. But, they have the training to use that weapon and know how to use it in circumstances that require the physical, psychological, and educational training that you get as a police officer. That is so off base and insulting to the law abiding citizen. I'm that not takes trying to be insulting. Well, I'm not it is taking insulting. Any, any rights away that they have to carry a firearm. It's only the capacity of the magazine that we're talking about in this it, bill. Well, it's exactly the point I've been making all along here. The law abiding citizen has every right to defend their family. And just I agree as with much that. as a retired officer. I and agree with that. To say, to say that they don't have the ability to distinguish when they need to use that weapon is really insulting to the people of New York. I'm not yielding right now. I'll yield on your time. When you get up and ask me a question, I'll yield. But not right now. I'm going to make my point. That is so insulting, Mr. Lentall, to say that the law-abiding citizens of this state, that makes an assumption that they're whipping their guns out and shooting people willy-nilly all over the place. That doesn't happen, and you know that doesn't happen. Gun crime and gun violence Mr. is, it, is at an all-time low. Mr. Is it McLaughlin, not? are you on the bill? I is just said, is it not? Can I finish my statement? We, but if you're on the bill, then you're on the bill, so that you're not asking Mr. I'm not Lentall. on the bill. But then you're on the bill. Mr. McLaughlin is on the bill, Mr. I am Lentall. not on He's still the asking bill. questions. 
Are you asking a question? I've Mr. been asking questions, oh, and, and I and just I think, finished well, one. We would ask you to ask the question, sir. If you'd let me finish, Mr. Chairman, I, Mr. Speaker, I finished with a question. But, Mr. Why do you yield, rise, sir? Mr. Speaker, just as you tell all of us that it's their choice on how they a answer a question, it's our choice on how we ask a question. That's a part of the rule. Mr. Well, McLaughlin is choosing to ask a question in his own way. He should be allowed to do it just the way Mr. Lenthal should choose how he answers the question. Mr. Tedesco. Yeah, but that statement finished with a question. I said, Mr. is that McLaughlin, not the truth? McLaughlin, I believe she's addressing me, not you. Eating up my time, by the way. Mr. Speaker, if we, could, if we could take a second and just try to get control of the House, that would be very appreciated. Uh, certainly asking rules. questions, we the rules. asking questions and allowing answers is appropriate and it works on both sides. And that is what we attempt to do and want to do. Please, Mr. McLaughlin, would you proceed? Mr. Speaker, if I can question. just say that I have, I have no qualms about Mr. McLaughlin asking a question. I have no intention of being insulting to anyone. I'm just stating an opinion about what I believe the law of the state of New York uh, is and maybe what it ought to be and who should have more authority over firefight situations in the state of New York, whether it's an ordinary citizen or whether it's someone who is trained to deal with them. Do you think then, Mr. Lenthal, that let's take a non-firefight situation. Let's just take defending your home and your family. Do you think that a retired officer has any more right to, uh, to more rounds in his uh, weapon than a person that has the same right to defend their family? That's not in this bill, but uh, we've already made that judgment and is now the policy of the state of New York in order to prevent kids, people, to have less death and destruction on the street that we're trying to restrict the use of firearms. We're also making another judgment today that when it comes to our police force, we don't want to go that far because we need the police protection in the state of New York, and they ought to be empowered to use whatever means at their disposal in order to execute the law. But a civilian does not, is not afforded that it's same right. It's not the right. civilian's job to, to, to defend, defend their family, to defend the public. I'm not talking about that. I just said, I'm what about inside about their home? That's this bill. You're talking about the SAFE Act that we just passed. That's, that's, no, no, I'm no, no. I'm talking no. about this bill. You're amending the bill in chief. We can talk about the entire SAFE Act all you day can, long. But that's not what this bill does. This, this bill, bill has, amends the bill in chief, does it not? It does. Then we can talk about the entire SAFE Act. What? Because you're amending the bill in chief. We don't have a bill in chief. It amends the law that's now on the books. The bill in chief is already gone. It was gone in January. He, you're amending the SAFE Act. That's what you're doing. And, I, and this, it does, it does exactly uh, uh, pertain to what I'm talking about. It does. Because it, out on the street, you're saying that retired police can carry more rounds? I have no issue with that. I don't have a problem with that because they're very valuable, those retired police officers. And we should pass this bill. That's but all I'm saying. I'm not amending any piece of this nightmare. No way am I amending any piece of this. And I love the cops, so I'm not amending any of it. I want the whole thing gone, and let's start over with a sane, rational approach to this thing, which we did not get to begin with. But it does directly pertain to what I said. Inside their home, the civilian can only protect his family with seven, one of the stupidest things I've ever seen. You have a gun that can hold ten, but you're only supposed to load seven. Limit your ability to defend your family by 30 percent. But if you're a retired officer, your family's on higher ground and you can defend them with whatever you feel like defending them with. That's what this bill does, along with what you're saying, which is the good part of the bill, that they can get out on the street and carry what they need to carry. Right? Okay. So what about this? You have to serve at least 10 years before separation, correct? Before this, uh, this comes into Five play? Five years. Five years. I'm sorry, I thought I'm reading here, it's, I thought it said served at least 10 years. The bill was amended to conform to the Senate bill. Okay, so it's five years. Okay, so then a, a, an officer that uh, served, now it's five. Okay, so I apologize for that, I thought it was 10. So if somebody served only four years and then got another job, they don't get that same ability to uh, carry what they need. 
aren't they highly trained as well? I'm told that the federal law is 10, so I don't know what the problem is. I, I don't follow you. This, uh, this tracks the federal law, H.R. 218. Okay, so it's so both 5 or 10? Yeah, we're being easier than federal law is now by not, instead of having 10 years requirement, we're having well, a five year requirement. Okay, so we are five. So it has been changed from what I have here. So it's now five. But if, if you're on the job for four years, 355 days, and you're 10 days short of your fifth year, you're not on the same level as a guy that's been there, or a lady that's been there five that's years. That's right. You don't qualify. But aren't they highly trained officers, Joe? Don't we need them out on the streets in a firefight to defend innocent lives? We have to have a cutoff time. Why? They're highly trained officers. Because we make the law. We have to have yeah, a cutoff. Yeah, that's working out well. All right. Uh, why wasn't this taken care of when the bill was enacted in the first place? Is that uh, any idea why we didn't just do it to begin with? I think it was just an oversight in the bill. I don't believe that the framers of the bill, and I didn't, I wasn't involved in the drafting of it, so I can't tell you that uh, I had a hand in it, but, uh, and I probably could have made the same mistake and not include the officers, whether active or retired in the first place. Thank or you, included Joe. Them. Same mistake, Mr. but we talked about this the Mr. day the Mr. bill McLaughlin, was debated. you can come back for your second 15 if you like.